Today we are discussing the importance of fluid management. It is one of the most misunderstood aspects of drilling and can have a major impact on your operation. Today we will discuss the most important role in HCD operation, mud management. We will share how the proper mud mix affects HCD efficiency. So starting off with the first question, what role does mud play in HCD process and why is proper mix so important? Well, the drilling fluid really is the lifeblood of the whole HD operation. The drilling fluid itself really has multi-purposes for what it does and what it serves down, uh, during the process. And for example, it acts as a lubricant to help lubricate the product, to help lubricate the drill pipe that's from the drill rig itself. It also acts as a cooling agent for the tooling the downhole. Um, but more importantly, its biggest purpose is to help act as a carrier or a conveyor to help remove the solids out of the borehole and help stabilize the borehole. But without a good mud management plan, knowing what the right additives are that you need to, to incorporate into the bore. The other thing too about the drilling fluid is that it's really helped create and provide a way to help drill longer distances and larger diameters. You know, without a good drilling fluid additive being pumped down hole to help stabilize the borehole, to help suspend the cuttings, to help flow the cuttings out of the borehole, you're gonna be restricted to how far you can drill and how large a diameter bore that you can actually make state the bigger the hole I have, the more cuttings I have or that I'm trying to remove from that hole, the more fluid I need to be able to carry those cuttings out. Exactly. I mean, you know, the amount of fluid that needs to be pumped down hole is all based off the hole diameter and how many solids you're dealing with. And it's going to vary from board to project to project. And it's really based off the hole diameter. I think that's something that also plays in that is what is your soil conditions? You know, your volume that you're pumping and the velocity that you're pumping is all in conjecture with what is my, my soil conditions like? What, what can my soil maintain? We start with drilling fluid, but I think it leads us to, you know, how does a drilling fluid mix system affect that HD performance or affect that job site? Well, it's definitely one of the key components within the, the, the package, you know, of an HD project. Every piece of equipment on that job serves a purpose. And obviously without a good mixing system, setting yourself up for failure. So what makes a good mixing system? It has enough horsepower to push and move the fluid through the system efficiently to be able to shear and break down that bentonite. Um, and also to mix the water with the additives that you're adding into the tank itself. And then also a good way to help circulate and roll that fluid in the tank to keep everything moving in suspension. That's what makes up a good, a good mixing system. So it's a very key part of the whole HDD process when it comes to the performance side. So I think it's fair to state that the, you know, the mix system is just as important as the drill that's on the job site. Right? For sure. As we, as we discuss fluid management, as we turn water into a fluid um, that we'll use for drilling fluid, it's important that we have a proper and adequate mix system to be able to get that proper fluid that we can send to the drill, which ultimately gets sent down hole. So what are some key considerations when mixing drilled fluids for the job site? The major consideration is what are your soil conditions? That is the absolute key. But whenever you're mixing up um, your different polymers and bentonites into a mix system, I mean, what, what can we measure? Uh, we can measure viscosity. We can measure gel strength. We can measure filter cake. Uh, what is viscosity? Viscosity is the resistance to flow. Uh, what is gel strength? It addresses how I'm carrying those cuttings out of the bore path. You know, that suspension characteristic, that's gel strength. What is filter cake? Well, filter cake is uh, that thin layer of sealant so that we don't have filtration outside the bore path or we don't have seepage of fluids to into the bore path, like for instance, fresh water or salt water, depending on where you're drilling. Those are some of the keys that uh, go into uh, mixing drilling fluid. So John, you talk about ground conditions. so. Once I mix that drilling fluid to start the day, is that drilling fluid going to be good for the whole entire job throughout the day? Or is that something that, you know, customers and contractors need to be monitoring throughout the, that project? Well, they should be measuring their drilling fluids at least once an hour and doing those tests to those, those drilling fluids. And the way I try to explain to people in the field whenever I set up equipment is, you know, Add your bentonite, you know, add your, add your soda ash, add your bentonite, and then start adding your polymers as needed. But 
throughout the day, your polymers are gonna start deteriorating. So you're gonna have to start adding just a little bit more polymers throughout the day in order to keep your sus suspension and your filtration characteristics up. So I already have a mixing system. You know, where do I start from there or where do I go from there? So number one is your water you're putting into that mix system. Where's it coming from? So am I coming from a hydrant? Uh, normally city water is going to be very acidic. It's going to be measuring, I've measured it as low as 4.5 pH. Um, it's normally around 6 pH. Where do we need it? Uh, well, we need it between 8 and 9. The closer to 9, the better the yield of the bentonite will be and some of the, your, your polymer additives that you add into it. So how do I adjust that? Well, I adjust that with soda ash. So that's the key number one step um, that a lot of customers will skip is they, they feel like I'm getting water from the hydrant, so I'm good. Uh, that's not the case. I'm getting water from maybe uh, a farmer's uh, water well. Well, that could be going through a limestone aquifer. So therefore, I, I've got a lot of hard, hardness in the water. I, I've got to be able to bring down the hardness. Soda ash will do it somewhat, but there's some other chemicals that they can add to it to bring down the hardness of the water. Uh, we want the hardness to be on the extreme side lower than 200 parts per million, but we'd rather have it closer to 150 parts per million or lower. So step one is so critical and so important because you have all the added cost with bentonite or other additives, but if we don't get the pH right Absolutely. on that initial test or before we start adding those additives, we could be potentially not getting the same performance we, of those additives or just wasting those. We're, we're wasting them yep. uh, because the bentonite will not yield. Are there any special considerations to think through when mixing bentonite, polymers, or other additives? It's a chemical makeup. You know, when you introduce that additive, whether it's a bentonite, whether it's a polymer, whether it's a detergent into that water in the mixing tank, you know, there's a chemical reaction going on, right? So it's important that you understand the proper mixing order. For example, a polymer really is designed to help encapsulate the solids. So as you're drilling down the, in the borehole, that fluid is introduced in the borehole, that polymer acts as a capsule to encapsulate those particles and, and keep them from swelling or, 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 or drying out. So if you were to have a tank mixed up with strictly polymer and water, you don't want to add bentonite on top of it because bentonite is a powder form in most cases. And what's going to happen is that polymer is going to encapsulate that, those bentonite particles and, and, and not be able to break and shear and yield. So there is a specific order that those additives need to be mixed into the mixing tank. And then again, you know, in most cases, most polymers are in liquid form, not all of them, but several of them are. They are introduced into the mixing tank through the, through the open mouth of the tank or a port into the tank, into the fresh water. Where bentonite is typically gone in through a mixing hopper, which has a venturi uh, mounted directly below it, which shears that bentonite apart. And that goes back to what we said earlier about having a good mixing system that has enough horsepower to push that fluid through that venturi to create that pressure that you need to help break and shear those bentonite particles apart. So yes, there is a science to it, and it is important that you understand what additive you're adding and when to add it to the, sure. to the mix. I think DeMarv's point also is uh, yield time. A lot of times we see drillers in the field, they do not let their polymers yield out. Uh, they don't wait for them long enough. And we're not talking about, okay, I put my polymer or I put my bentonite in and then I, uh, five minutes later, I put my polymers on top of it. That's not letting enough yield time for the bentonite to yield out. And just like DeMarv's point also is, is bentonite is a clay. And I'm putting a polymer right on top of a clay. Well, he just stated that a uh, polymer will encapsulate clay. So therefore, we're not letting our bentonite yield out. So to summarize there, we, we start with soda ash, then we go to bentonite. We need to get the proper yield of that bentonite. From there, we can start adding those polymers. And depending on this, the style or the type of polymer, there might be ones that need to be added before others. Um, and then and it's important to also note, you mentioned the shear, right? We need horsepower to be able to shear that bent night. In order to get that horsepower, we need to be at full RPM, right? We need to create that velocity through that, that Venturi to be able to get that proper shear. So 
it's important for our customers to make sure that they, they turn that rig to full RPM on that power unit or on that mix system to be able to get that proper initial shear because that is where, where that happens is right through that initial venturi or through that initial stage. Thank you for joining us for our discussion on the importance of fluid management. Be sure to continue to tune in as we discuss fluid management on your operation. If you have further questions, reach out to your local Vermeer dealer or visit vermeer.com.